Sheboygan house fire claims a life. Sheboygan County COVID numbers. Most state parks to reopen Friday. These and other local stories are coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Fister, and this is Community News Review for Thursday, April 30th, 2020. Sheboygan County's efforts to control the coronavirus pandemic continue to be effective, if not impressive. All statistics remained the same over the last 24 hours, and save for the numbers of tests, in which all 34 persons that were tested were negative. That shows a 5.1% positive return on all 300 or 937 tests so far. Total positive cases have numbered 48 for four days running, with only three cases added within the last week. And the five active cases since yesterday are the lowest number this month so far. Statewide, another 208 persons tested positive for COVID-19. And as a percentage of total tests, the 8.9% positive return rate resumed the downward trend needed to continue for 14 consecutive days as a key requirement to start phase one of the Badger Bounce Back program to restart the state's normal operations. The State Department of Health Services announced that families will now get temporary food benefits in place of free or reduced price school meals. These benefits are called pandemic EBT or PEBT. The benefit amount for March and April combined is $176.70 for each child who gets free or reduced price school meals. And for May to June, the amount is $148 dollars and 20 cents per child. These benefits will be put on a Quest card or a PEBT card, which is a debit card to buy food. The department said that those eligible will be notified automatically and so persons do not need to take any action at this time. A powerful spring storm has was relentless on Wednesday and never let up overnight. 30 to 35 mile per hour winds were sustained much of the day and gusted to 40 miles per hour by 3 o'clock p.m., driving already high Lake Michigan waters onto Broughton Drive. By 5 o'clock p.m., the Department of Public Works had to close the road from Michigan Avenue to North Point Avenue Drive until further notice and conditions along the lakeshore from here south southward are not likely to improve until Thursday afternoon. The National Weather Service issued a lakeshore flood advisory early this morning until one o'clock as strong winds drive waves of seven to 12 feet offshore. Winds also caused power outages around Sheboygan Wednesday afternoon, causing police to issue a cautionary message as traffic signals went dark. Officers placed stop signs at the affected intersections and asked drivers to use caution. The good news is that our weather takes a big turn for the better on Friday. One person lost their life in a house fire on Sheboygan's south side on Tuesday afternoon. Fire Chief Eric Montalano says in a press release that they got a 911 call about the fire on the 23rd hundredth block of South 9th Street shortly after 2 o'clock p.m. When crews arrived, they found light smoke coming from the second floor of the home. Firefighters went inside and found a victim on the second floor. The victim was treated at the scene and then taken to the hospital where they were pronounced dead. One other person was displaced but not injured and the fire was put out and most of the damage was contained to the second floor. The cause is still under investigation. One person was injured in a two car crash on the intersection of Weeding Creek Road and South Taylor Drive on the city's far south side. 
Sheboygan police say that around 2 o'clock p.m. Tuesday, an elderly driver was southbound on Taylor Drive and failed to stop for the stop sign at Whedon Creek Road and pulled into a path of another car causing the crash. The driver of the car was not injured, but the driver of the southbound car was taken to a local hospital and then transported to the St. Luke's for more serious injuries. While the dairy industry has struggled even without a pandemic to interrupt business, the coronavirus outbreak has put many farms on the brink of survival. According to a recent Dairy Stream podcast, there was a $66 million loss in the state revenue during February and March alone. To provide some relief, Consumer Credit Counseling Service of Sheboygan has announced that the creation of Sheboygan County Dairy Farmer Fund financial grants of up to $5,000 made possible by a local foundation will be awarded to Sheboygan County dairy farmers who have been struggling to make ends meet, according to Wayne Gresbach, Executive Director and Consumer Credit Counseling Service of Sheboygan. The foundation was not named and remains anonymous. Funds can be used by farmers for paying expenses ranging from medical bills to farm and home mortgages. And the deadline to apply is May 13th. Applications for the Sheboygan County Dairy Farmer Fund can be found on the Consumer Credit Counseling Service website at www.cccsonline.org or by calling 920-783-6857. And finally, after a three-week closure, most state parks will reopen with some caveats on Friday, May 1st. The governor made that order on Tuesday that parks had been open under the safer at home order until incidents of vandalism and large crowds prompted the closing earlier this month. Not all parks will be unrestricted and a few will remain closed. Some, like Harrington Beach State Park in Belgium, will impose limits of visitor numbers, and once that limit is reached, anyone wishing to enter will have to wait for another to leave. Kohler Andre State Park in Sheboygan does not have that restriction, but limits might be imposed if too many people visit or if social distancing rules are violated. The DNR said that not all staff and wardens will be in personal protection equipment at all times, but will utilize the protection when needed, and they will observe the safe, same safety measures as the required of the public. And that is our report for today. Join me again on Tuesday for more local news and information on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.